This is the DJI Mini 5 Pro. In today's video, we're going to see how good it is for photogrammetry, 3D scanning, and the first thing that I want to talk about is just how much of an upgrade this is. You have much better obstacle avoidance, you have this massive 1 inch sensor that is going to be phenomenal for taking photos and videos, and you can also go through and take really good pictures for photogrammetry, it's a 50 megapixel 1 inch sensor. Also, you can fully automate this with waypoint maps, so you can have it go through and fly a full mission so automatically without having to do anything so what we're going to do today is i'm going to show you we're going to test it we're going to compare it against the mini 4 pro and also the mavic 4 pro and we're going to see how good it is we're going to put it up to the test and see if there's any noticeable improvements and also we're going to go through and do a full flight plan full 3d model i'm going to show you how to do exactly all that now, a couple other things I do want to point out real quick, though, is that this drone supposedly is 250 grams. There's been some shakiness on that. It does have the Category 0 rating for EU people. However, so that may mean that if you're in the EU and you want to fly this over buildings to do your photogrammetry, that is something to keep in mind that you probably just want to weigh this. I would also assume that the SD card and maybe even taking off this little cover here might put you above or below that amount but I don't think you actually can take off this cover anymore because I think all the ND filters are snap on. So technically, no, you cannot take off this cover. So uh, you really cannot lose some weight there. I'm sure you could probably get a little handy and remove some parts if you really needed to, but um, realistically, this some drones do weigh less, some drones do weigh more. So compared to the Mini 4 Pro, you have a bigger sensor and you also have the ability to kind of rotate this gimbal a lot more, similar to how the Mavic 4 did. Um, so you can rotate this gimbal while flying, whereas you really could only rotate this vertically and horizontally on the Mini 4 Pro. Also, the obstacle avoidance is better. I don't know why you'd want to be flying at night, because that's really what this LiDAR system is good for. But it is something to keep in mind as well, is that that's a possibility if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, I don't know how well nighttime photogrammetry would even be like what you would use that for. But overall, that's pretty solid. It also does have, I believe, 48 gigabytes of onboard storage, so you can pretty much run your stuff if you forget an SD card. That also probably means it's a little bit faster, and you also have this side button to start. Um, but this, the main purpose of this video today, we're going to talk about how good it is for photogrammetry. It also does appear that the batteries are interchangeable, so you can swap those out. And then also, another added bonus is that unlike the previous versions of the mini drones, you actually have the ability for hot swappable or I shouldn't say hot swap, you shouldn't be swapping these out in flight, but the ability to lock in these propellers so you're not just tearing up the screws because a lot of people end up stripping the screws. So this is a really good option as well. Just means you have to be more mindful of where your propellers are and how um, well they are locked in. Also, I have two SD cards. I'm going to load them in here. These are from Kingston and I'm just going to do an identical flight path on either one. Um, and then that way it's nothing is different. Same SD card nothing but the drone is different. So I'm gonna jump over into Waypoint Map. I'm gonna show you how to plan a mission. We're gonna plan the identical mission and run the same mission on both these drones. And then we're going to see what the major differences are and also if there's any changes in the quality models. So we're gonna take the exact same pictures, the exact same spots and run the exact same mission. And then we'll see how the quality looks like. So let's jump over to Waypoint Map and I'll show you how to do that. So first we're going over to Waypoint Map and we're gonna load our mission in there. And then that way we can kind of flight plan what we wanna do. I'm going to be using the advanced version, so when you log in, that's going to be the option here. And then I'm going to go to this park here that I normally fly, and we're going to create three missions that we're going to load into my RC2 Pro. Also, I want to remind everybody that I have a full tutorial on how to use this that I'll link in the description, how to install everything. So if you're getting kind of lost and you're not sure um, like what to do, this is more supposed to be an overview video. And if you need a detailed, in-depth explanation on how to use this and also how to install everything, I'll include a link to that in the description so you can go through and follow along um, because it is a confusing process and I am going rather quickly because that's not really my purpose of this video. Um, I'd highly recommend you watch the tutorial video if that's something you want to pursue more. So I usually like to do um, a couple circles. So flight pass like this, I might drop the quality down and I also might have it so that it takes pictures um, on each waypoint and then it's going to generate each point out and then let's do the same thing with a little smaller of a circle so that way we should have two circles 
like such. But that's mission number one. So it's going to fly around here, take these pictures, and then we'll throw that into a model. So not anything complicated. Download that KMZ file. Then let's reset. Head over to this little uh, area that I like to fly normally and then go through here and kind of repeat the same process. If you want to do different shapes, you can. Um, so I just, since this is a single subject, I'm going to kind of want to go through and kind of make something smaller. But in, if you wanted to go through instead and have it so that it kind of did an outline per se, maybe you wanted to make a map, you could in theory too, if you adjust the gimbal angle down to about 90. Even better yet, since this, we probably want it to go east-west and also probably take every point. So that's going to be, gonna fly through here and take each picture, and I'm actually gonna drop the quality up a little bit. And then that way it's gonna take all these pictures and then we'll have a nice little ortho of this whole little area too. I think I'm probably just gonna do this on the mini, I think I have one with the Mavic, so we can compare it with the Mavic 4 Pro. So I'm gonna try that out here. Let's download that. So I should have four different missions I can fly now, and now I'm gonna load them up into my RC. So I'm gonna go through and open the KMZ installer. I have my RC2, RC Pro 2 installed, and then I'm gonna go through and install these in each of the spots. So let's just say this is, and then now they're all installed to my RC Pro, and I can go through and fly all of these real quick with all the different drones. So that way we can compare with the Mavic 4 Pro, the Mini 3 Pro, sorry the mini 4 pro and the mini 5 pro so i'm going to go through and fly this mission now now that we've done our setup here and let's see kind of what the final results look like so then i went out i started the mission up and i went through and i flew it on all three of the drones so first with the dji mini 5 pro um, it's interesting that the 2x camera on this when i was testing it really is just a cropped in version of the sensor they advertise this tele feature and I thought that would be interesting, but it really is just a digital zoom when I compare the quality. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this drone. Yes, it's nice to have a button, but at the same time, it's best just to take the picture and then zoom in and post. I really couldn't tell any difference. It does advertise being whatever the 50 megapixels, but I don't really personally see any difference between just the standard non zoomed in picture and then digitally zooming in and post. Also keep in mind this is fully autonomous so now that we have the mission loaded we can pretty much just hit a button and go and it will go through and fly and capture all these pictures for us so we don't really have to worry so much about manually flying this which can actually be kind of difficult at times. So I went through fly the mission on this drone and then I also went through with my DJI Mavic 4 Pro and flew the mission with that drone and then also finally with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So between all that, I had enough pictures to go through and create uh, different 3D models. So now let's go over and load this up into the drone. So I'm going to be using aerialmodel.com in order to make the 3D models. The big things right away is that um, after you upload the images, we want to make sure that we have consistent overlap. And what does that mean? It means that the pictures themselves have enough overlapping portions that the software itself can make a 3D model. Um, good thing when we use waypoint map this kind of did this automatically for us but overall it's a good habit to have especially if you are doing this on a drone that doesn't support automated waypoint missions like for example the dji flip or maybe one of the older dji drones but as you can see as it loads up it will load up all the different pictures into the software and then you'll be able to see kind of where you need to take more pictures or if you have good enough overlap now for overhead maps or ortho photos, um, you're going to probably need a little bit more overlap than uh, you probably think because uh, this is my software and my software requires a little bit more overlap because it actually reconstructs a 3D model from it and then makes your photo. Um, but the good news is this is really solid and we can actually go through and get a really nice overhead picture as well as a 3D model. Um, for this soccer field, I want to have a big overhead map. Um, I really want a high definition, big picture. Um, so I'm gonna go through and have it do an ortho photo. And then you don't need to wait for this, but we're gonna wait, kind of see what everything looks like. And then you can just hit go and it will start processing and then it will spit out a nice pretty picture. Um, also, if you wanna do a 3D model, it's just the same process pretty much, um, but it really depends on how you capture the pictures is really the major deciding factor on kind of what 
kind of purpose you're doing. If you want a map, you capture them looking straight down. And if you want a big model, you kind of capture them at an angle and you don't fly directly overhead the subject. So let's wait for these to process and then we'll go through and compare them to each of the different drones. Okay, so we have the, uh, everything's finally loaded up. So we have the Mini 4 Pro and then we have the, I believe this is the Mini 5 Pro. And this is the map. So let me open this up. And here's the direct side by side comparison. So we can fly in a little bit. And as you can see, you can definitely get a little bit more quality. I don't know if it's by that much, but I mean, I can tell a little bit of a difference. I don't know if the sensor quality is just that big of a difference, but you definitely can tell a little bit more detail with the, because this is the Mini 5 Pro here than the Mini 4 Pro here. So you definitely can tell a little bit of detail difference. Let me open up and then to compare it to something a little bit more likewise is the, this is the Mavic, this is the Mavic 4 Pro. So this is, as you can tell, even a higher step up. So obviously, as you can see, you get a lot more crispness with the Mavic 4 Pro versus the Mini 5 Pro. But still, I would say, it's a slight increase over the Mini 4 Pro, but I also think the, the quality does look pretty solid as well. So I'd say definitely the Mavic is probably better, which is what you'd expect, which is also pretty much three times the price. I'd say you definitely can get by with the Mini 5 Pro. So for more orthos and making maps, it looks pretty good. And then taking a look at the models itself. So this is the Mini 5 Pro right here on the same side. Let me adjust the quality settings real quick. So as you can see, looks about the same. Looks honestly about the same between the different models. This is the Mini 4 Pro. This is the Mini 5 Pro. Honestly, flying the exact same flight plan, I personally can't really tell that huge of a difference. They flew, they took the exact same pictures on both missions. Maybe you're getting a little bit more detail on the Mini 5 Pro, you're getting maybe a little bit more captured, but honestly, nothing great or crazy there. Switching it over to the Mavic, the Mavic appears to also have a little bit, looks about the same, honestly, not that big of a difference as well. So don't necessarily see a huge difference. It looks like maybe even the Mini 5 Pro does a little bit better job with the trees, but Overall, I can't really tell that big of a difference between the different drones. It looks about the same quality-wise. I'm sure if I was doing something a little bit darker, then I would probably, maybe like at night or d dusk, I probably would be doing a little bit better um, compared to the Mini 4 Pro. But overall, it still looks pretty solid there. Now, I think what is interesting to me right away, though, is that this is the Mini 5 Pro right here. And if I adjust the quality settings, you can see that there are some spots that it struggled with. But this is the Mini 4 Pro, which is flying the exact same mission with the exact same pictures. And for some reason, it is not getting, it is not capturing a lot of this detail, which is interesting. Also, switching it over to the Mavic, even the Mavic has some larger areas with its higher megapixels that it's still struck, uh, still struggling with. So I think it is very interesting that I think overall, the quality itself, it kind of struggles in the same spots and kind of trades blow with the Mavic. But I do think overall, it definitely did put out a really solid model of this baseball field. And I would definitely say that it's much better for some reason than the Mini 4 Pro. So I just think that is a very night and day difference between at least some of the patchy areas. And then if we take a look at the actual center house here, it looks like it does do a little bit better job with the roof in some parts. Also, if you notice, there's a little bit of a color difference, which I think is interesting. So if you want to use any of these softwares, I'll have a link to Aerial Model and also a link to Waypoint Maps so you can plan your own missions. And I'll also have a link to all the deliverables and stuff, everything that I used in this video, as well as all the different final products as well. You'll have links. You can view these models and see what you think um, down in the description as well. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. I'll be releasing a review video as well of the Mini 4 Pro versus the Mini 5 Pro, as well as versus the Mavic. And then I have some really exciting upcoming things that you really should be subscribed for because I am really excited about them. And... Uh, 
I think you should be too. So thanks very much for watching and uh, have a great one. Bye.